forms. Congratulations! We have evolved from shapes to using the big kid blocks. Squares? Circles? Triangles? Welcome to the big leagues. We're in cube, cylinder, and pyramid town now, kiddos. But don't think you're out of the kitty bin just yet. Yeah, you know 3D geometry with your base times height times width and your pi r squared times height and your base times height multiplied by a third, whatever, whatever. You know, it's been a while since I've had to Google two of those, but as we all know, this isn't a math class, and your calculators have no power within whatever amount of minutes this video is. And just like shapes are essential to drawing, forms are the next essential step to learning more complex concepts to create stunning works of art. Let's continue. Our friend Google states that form as an element of art is three-dimensional and encloses space. Like a shape, a form has length and width, but it also has depth. Forms are either geometric or freeform. Wowza! We did it, y'all! A concise and easy to understand definition from Google. I don't even need to expand on that one. But I will anyway, because the video mandates that I must. Like the definition states, form is the three-dimensional counterpart to shape, adding another length of measurement, depth. Just like shape, form can be broken down into two categories, geometric or freeform, which is just another way to say organic. They hold around the same principle as geometric and organic shapes, but let me expand on both. Geometric forms are forms that are mathematical, precise, and can be named. These include our basic and well-known geometric forms that we learn in math and that I mentioned previously. Cubes, rectangular prisms, cones, pyramids, spheres, cylinders, and more are all considered geometric forms. Just like geometric shapes, geometric forms achieve the same thing. Illustrating and building man-made objects are always done with geometric forms because they're easier to calculate and repeat. Skyscrapers, houses, and cars, just to name a few, are all considered geometric, all built with geometric forms. An example of geometric forms in artwork is Asteriscos by Tony Smith. Again, for very obvious reasons. See, you'll get mad at me for choosing something so blatantly geometric, but I was originally gonna go with like any of Anne Truitt's works and then decided against it. This sculpture is made up of nothing but rectangular prisms, creating a very geometric and precise overall look. Lots of Tony Smith's work also follow these lines, where they're built up of geometric forms to create very minimalist geometric sculptures. We still got lots more to talk about. Moving on. Organic forms are forms that look more natural. They are irregular and may seem flowing and unpredictable. The most obvious example of organic forms are things in nature, or living things. Just like organic shapes, organic forms have no real name attached to them and tend to be fairly random and irregular. Can you calculate their volume? I, I guess, but you'd probably have to do a bunch of fancy math equations. An example of artwork that uses organic forms is Reclining Figure by Henry Moore. While looking at this piece, you can't really say it's made out of proper forms that have names while looking at it. However, if you take some forms and combine them, you get the piece in front of you and the next point I'm about to make. All organic forms can be broken down into geometric forms, just like shapes. Knowing those geometrics are essential to creating your organics, and as always, of course I have examples for you. You ever seen those wooden dolls in an art store that you're supposed to draw to figure out how to pose people properly? That's probably as obvious as it'll get when it comes to geometric forms building up an overall organic form, and this is as basic as it gets when it comes to drawing people as well. Cylinders make up the limbs, spheres make up the joints, and midsection, etc, etc. These all make up the super basic forms you need when it comes to drawing the body. I have a couple of these wooden dolls, like I don't really use them because they don't have as wide of a range of motion as I'd like, but they're good starters when it comes to drawing people, and also make great art nerd room decor. But one thing these wooden dolls do really well is show off how important using forms are for perspective, especially foreshortening. But I'll get into those in the next example. You can also use forms for an isometric scene. Isometric forms are how most people start out drawing 3D geometry, but it isn't true perspective because there are no vanishing points. Everything is set on a 30 degree angle, so it stays within that locked perspective no matter what. You'll see isometric art in a lot of mobile games and some RPGs and dungeon crawlers, where it almost feels like everything's on a chessboard. With more complex illustrations, using 3D forms are essential for perspective, which makes things appear 3D on a flat or 2D surface. Artists achieve this by using shading, but even without shading, artists can still use line work to imply perspective. The basic types of perspective are one point, two point, and three point perspective, referring to the amount of vanishing points there are in the piece. All things recede towards a vanishing point, and how it recedes depends on how many points there are. Games as geometric as Minecraft make it pretty easy to see things in perspective, because of all of the straight edges, but we'll go more in depth in perspective in another video. Foreshortening is a very advanced artistic concept that a lot of artists tend to struggle with when starting out. It's like an extreme perspective where objects appear to be almost compressed to show that something's getting closer or farther away. Knowing geometric forms is essential to getting perspective right, and even more essential to understanding how foreshortening would work. Let's return to one of my favorite manga in terms of illustrative quality, One Punch Man. This manga is masterfully illustrated all around, but its foreshortening is intense and used in a lot of action scenarios, adding that little extra bit of 
extreme movement and extra drama to each panel. In this panel, the foreshortening is used most notably within the long tendrils coming off of this boss character. Something a lot of artists use when foreshortening limbs and tendrils in particular is either the ring technique or the coil technique. These use rings or coils to emphasize a form coming closer or getting farther away. The rings get smaller and closer together as they grow more distant. Getting these curves right are key to making a form feel 3D. If it's done incorrectly, the whole piece can feel weird or flat. Understanding what geometric shapes you need to build up your organic shapes are incredibly important when it comes to perspective. Prisms and cylinders are the most common geometric forms in the human body, so understanding those forms are key to learning to draw the human body in perspective. In this panel, you can see how understanding cylinders would be vital to this entire scene. Orochi's tendrils are practically huge extended cylinders, and Saitama's body can be broken down into a few cylinders as well. Don't be discouraged if this all sounds a little crazy. Forms are one of the most challenging elements of art to get right. As I mentioned in our previous shape video, focus on mastering shapes before attempting forms. It takes a ton of time to get forms right, and with enough practice, you'll definitely get there. Forms are easy to grasp at first, but drawing them in perspective can add another layer of challenge to them. They're incredibly important to your drawing fundamentals, just like shapes are, and understanding them completely, in both artistic and some mathematical ways, is key to creating masterful works of art. For your next piece, think about how you can use forms and perspective into your pieces. What forms make up your art supplies? Can you draw your bedroom in 3D? How about your arm as it goes into the distance? Begin by learning to draw isometrically first, before moving on to full perspective. Start with little challenges when it comes to illustrating forms, and then move on to the more advanced concepts once you're ready. If you're a teacher, we have worksheets on the topic, which you can find on our website, along with other art resources for your classroom, link down below. If you liked what you saw, make sure to leave a like on this video, comment down below to tell me what you'd like to see me draw next, and hit subscribe so that you never miss an upload. Join our little art community with the links down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye They hold around the same principles as geometric and organic shapes, but let me explain them both. Oh, I was so close. <laughs> <laughs> this sculpture is made up of nothing but regular prisms, creating a very geometric and precise overall look. Regular. That says rectangular. I am exhausted. You can tell. And with enough practice, you'll definitely get there. I'm not doing that again. That's, <laughs> that's good enough. That's a take.